This tutorial will show you how to make a wireframe, which is a popular way to visualize the design of a page before you start actually doing the design work. We'll cover best practices for wireframing regardless of what tool you're using, but for this tutorial I'm using Gliffy, which is an easy to use diagramming app available in Confluence, Jira, and online. You can learn more about our app through the info linked in the upper right, or you can find a link to start a free trial in the video description. In Gliffy, I'm going to go to File, New, and then I'll select the wireframe option from this create a new diagram tab. This preloads in the shapes that I will need to make a wireframe in this shape bar here on the left. The first thing I want to do is find the right container to describe the context of what I'm building. So for a web page, that will be a browser window. So I can drag this in. Looks good. Now from here, I can start dragging and dropping content placeholders onto the canvas too. But here's a pro tip. I'm going to add a new layer for those. This way I don't accidentally select or move this browser shape around while I'm creating my ideas on the page. To do that, I'll click this layer button in the toolbar here, and I'll click this plus button to add a layer. So now I have the wireframe on layer zero, which I can rename browser window, and I can lock it to make it so that I can't select or edit this wireframe. And then from here on out, I'm going to diagram on layer one, which I can rename to idea one. Great. Now I'm going to be designing the homepage for a local kayaking club. I know I want their name to appear as a headline, so I'll use this text tool up here and drag and drop in a shape and say Rush River Kayaking Club. Then I can use this edit text properties to resize it, make it look a little more like a headline. It's also a best practice to have navigation options at the top of your page, so I'm going to use the text tool again to write in some of these next clicks. And let's say the pages we want to have are for events. I'm going to do Command D to quickly copy this. Summer Camp. Again, Command D. Resources. and contact. And I can drag over these to put them approximately where I want them on the page. Now here's where I can start getting creative. I think I'd like an image for the header for this site. So I can drag in this image placeholder here. Adjust the size of it. And then I'll use this send to back button here to send it behind the headline. Looks good. And below that, maybe I want to pull in images from our Instagram page. So this is where I can drag in and do command D to duplicate again. And select these, make sure they're all centered. I want users to be able to click through or scroll through these images, so I'll add these little navigation buttons here too. Cool. And it looks like we're running out of room already, so I'm going to go back to our base layer and unlock it so that I can extend this browser window and give us some more room on the page. We can zoom out to check on that. Let's go even a little bit further. Great. I'll lock that up again and jump back to my idea layer. Now, a few best practices to consider for building wireframes. First, you want to make sure you're always starting with the strategy for the page. For our homepage, let's say we want both members and potential members to be excited about everything going on with the kayaking club. Before I go adding more image placeholders, let's keep that in mind. Maybe I should have an upcoming events section and then could link to the events page up top. 
It also might be good to announce the dates for summer camp or share a new resource from the resource page. All of those would show that this club is really active and engaged with the community. So I'm going to build out some of those ideas. All right, now this is looking like what we would call a low fidelity wireframe. It's just the basics. We haven't worried about putting in any final copy for every section, and we don't know what colors or what fonts we'll be using yet. Maybe we wanna double check that we have the right resources to pull this page off. Maybe we should build a higher fidelity wireframe instead. One thing we can do is start adding in images we would expect to see on the site. To do that, I can just drag and drop images onto the canvas, just like other shapes. So to do that, I'm going to pull in my Kayak Club folder. And like I said, I'm just going to drag and drop some of my images into the diagram. And I'll, I'll just cover up these placeholders for now. I can also start adding or editing texts and shapes associated with the wireframe. So say I want all the buttons to be blue. I can go ahead and do that now as a note for our designer to remember to make all the buttons blue. I can also adjust this headline to look like something a little more close to whatever branding we have. Let's say I want it even bigger. Going through these steps can help you make sure you have the right resources to execute your idea or that your idea fits your brand. But remember the other wireframing best practice. Keep it simple and be flexible. At the end of the day, what you're creating is a rough plan and plans change. By creating a wireframe, you're able to make sure you stay focused on the strategy for the page you're building and get the team that's actually building it aligned on the goals and the plan. By being flexible, you can actually take advantage of the awesome designer you're working with or the witty writer assigned to help. Gliffy is packed with more powerful features to help you build out wireframes, like the ability to add links to your diagram. So be sure to give it a try and check out our other video tutorials. You'll be a pro in no time.